like to smoke weed. Can't smoke with everybody. I choose who I'm gonna smoke with based on what kind of snacks you're gonna have when we get high. <laughs> I got this white friend named Timmy. Had to put him in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> First time we smoked together, he pulled out some Lunchables. <laughs> Messed me up, because I didn't even know you could eat Lunchables at home. I thought you had to be in school to eat Lunchables. <laughs> I usually uh, will date potheads. <laughs> it's kind of my thing, you know? I don't know why. I guess they can't leave if they're already gone. <laughs> that's, that's what it is, you know? And I have done it since college, and I remember this one time in college trying to impress this pothead, which, you know, <laughs> isn't hard. <laughs> and everybody was smoking weed, uh, so I went ahead and just, like, smoked all of it. <laughs> until I thought that my mouth would never be wet again. <laughs> and then I proceeded to eat an entire pint of ice cream just to be able to swallow, really. <laughs> just to like, wet my whistle. Because <laughs> I was fairly certain that the police were coming. You know? <laughs> and somebody was gonna need to talk to them, so. And then everybody started to get up and leave like one by one because <laughs> of me because I was making it awful for everybody. <laughs> and the guy that I liked started to get up and go, and I was like, oh, no. You know? So I looked at him, and I was like, hey, it was really good to see you. You too. I answered for him. <laughs> yeah. Just threw in a little, you too. <laughs> and then I laughed for about three days. Uh, because I'm so uptight, I, uh, I do a lot of drugs. I smoke a lot of weed. That's my remedy. Uh, thank you. Yes, I'm brave. In that way, I'm brave. Uh, and I don't have any plans to stop uh, smoking weed, but I do want to scale back a little bit. So I do have a goal, uh, which is I want to stop smoking weed in a rush. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I want to stop smoking weed when I'm running out the door to go somewhere else. <laughs> I want to cut down on the number of times I'm alone in my apartment just going, okay, keys, wallet, phone. What am I, what am I for? Oh my God. <laughs> I almost left the apartment without taking a huge fat milky bong grip. What am I doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, now I'm ready for Target. Good. <laughs> so the first decision that I made to be a good guy is I decided to quit smoking marijuana. <laughs> Illegally. <laughs> and I got my pot card. Because, yeah. Well, I live in California right now where, it, you know, you still have to lie to doctors. <laughs> and the thing about it is they say it's so easy. You go into the doctor and you say, my back hurts or I've got anxiety and they just want you to smoke weed. <laughs> and so I went into a doctor and said, I've got anxiety that Someday my back might hurt. And he said, dude, that's a serious issue. A lot of people your age are dealing with that right now. Let's cut that off before it starts. And he gave me a weed card. Because I think scumbags go to drug dealers, but good guys lie to doctors. Do you have any pot smokers here at all? Oh. Jeez, is this a group outing? My God. Theory. I don't smoke weed, I have a theory. If your life sucks, don't smoke weed. Because when I was in college, I got high one time, and when I got high, everything slowed down. The last thing you need when your life sucks is to put that sucker in slow motion. So when you're sober and you're unemployed, you're unemployed, but when you're high and you're unemployed, you are unemployed. I say if your life sucks, drink, because if you drink, you might black out, and that's like a fast forward button. That's what you want. Like to smoke weed, man. Like to smoke weed. Can't smoke with everybody. I choose who I'm gonna smoke with based on what kind of snacks you're gonna have when we get high. I got this white friend named Timmy. Had to put him in the Hall of Fame. First time we smoked together, he pulled out some Lunchables. Messed me up, because I didn't even know you could eat Lunchables at home. I thought you had to be in school to eat Lunchables. <laughs> I 
I ate two semesters worth of Lunchables at his house. It was amazing. Third and fourth grade, it was crazy. He had the pizza Lunchables. Remember the pizza Lunchables? You felt like your own lunch lady. You be talking to yourself, I'm gonna put the sauce on it like this. I'm gonna spread the sauce with the pepper on it. I'm gonna bedazzle the cheese on it. I don't even know what bedazzle means, but I know you got a bedazzle the cheese. I used, to be a, I used to be a server at IHOP. I used to work at IHOP. Um, you know how hard it is to smoke weed, be big, and take orders? <laughs> Felt like me and the customers was always having foreplay. <laughs> they sound so sexy. Or they'd be like, um, I would like the pancakes. I'd be like, what kind of pancakes? They'd be like, buttermilk. I'd be like, ooh. <laughs> Then they get aggressive, give me two eggs, scramble with cheese. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> provolone cheese. I'm like, provolone? <laughs> I ain't never did it with the provolone. So, does anybody here smoke weed? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, in California, it is really easy to get your medical marijuana card. Mm, I just got mine. Woo! <laughs> For insomnia and depression, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you weren't supposed to put real things, so. <laughs> You can basically have any ailment and qualify for your weed card. Mm -hmm. So we wrote a song about how easy it is. Yep. <laughs> Everyone knows marijuana's dangerous and medical pot is really strong. That's why it's so hard in California to get your weed card unless something's really wrong. Gonna pay a visit to my doctor. It's a long shot, but I gotta try. She hands me a list of all the ailments I can have to qualify. Can't believe what I am reading. This is just what I've been needing. A government supply to get legally high. Weed card, that's what I need. Hardly ever okay, always. But it's not an addiction, cause my doctor gave me a prescription. I tried acid last year for the first time. Okay, I have about eight minutes left up here and then I'll talk to all of you. Um, <laughs> but I'd always heard acid was a good drug to do outdoors in nature. I live in New York City, not a lot of places to go, so I ate the acid and I went to Central Park. And I found the big lake in the middle of Central Park. I found a nice little rock by the side of the lake. And I was just sitting there, minding my business, watching the ducks float on the water. About 10 minutes go by, I turn to my right and there's a young little girl sitting next to me on the rock. And she looks up at me and she goes, hey, mister, you wanna hear a riddle? And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> I've never wanted to hear a riddle so badly before in my life. What you got, kid? And she goes, what's the beginning and end, the end of time, and the beginning and end of everywhere? And I was like, whoa. <laughs> like, does she know I'm on acid right now? I'm expecting how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. She's coming at me about space and time. <laughs> Wasn't ready for it, so I asked her to repeat it. She said, what's the beginning and end, the end of time, beginning and end of everywhere? Does anyone know? The letter E. Some shit she wrote on the back of a Laffy Taffy wrapper almost altered my existence. <laughs> the point is, though, if you're ever in the park, you see a grown man intensely talking to a young girl. Don't assume the worst, okay? <laughs> he could just be on acid. <laughs>